It is just now starting to feel like fall here in Illinois with the temperatures dropping and Halloween is right around the corner. So today I am bringing you a ton of fun Dollar Tree DIYs that are perfect for both fall and Halloween. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney, and if you're a whiskey craft buddy, welcome back. If you're not already a craft buddy, be sure to hit subscribe down below so we can be buddies and you won't miss a future DIY or budget home decor video. Now let's get into the projects. A few videos back, I showed you how to make this fun table garland out of these sweater pumpkins from Dollar Tree. Now I had some left over, and so I decided to make a pumpkin bouquet. I grabbed some bamboo skewers from the kitchen section and started by twisting off the pumpkins from the clips that they came on. Then I used the bamboo skewer to pop it into the bottom and then I had pumpkin picks, super quick and easy. I picked a lot of different colors and different textures for a wide variety and then it was time to display them. So I used this vessel I recently found at a thrift store and typically I am not a huge fan of Dollar Tree florals but for fall they had these beautiful muted leaves so I picked up some of the orange ones as well as some of these and I decided to use them in this display. I just bent the end so it would sit in there the height that I wanted and then I started adding all of my different pumpkins. Now to create different heights, I trimmed the ends of the bamboo skewers and I used them to fill the bottom edge so you couldn't see the sticks of the other pumpkins. This would make an awesome centerpiece for your Thanksgiving table or a great hostess gift if you're headed to a fall party. Now we're keeping these super quick and easy in this video. So up next is this fun ghost. I recently saw my friend Sarah Jane over at Cheek on the Chief make a large version of this and that inspired me to figure out how to come up with a shelf sitter version. So I took this styrofoam ball I had left over from my Sanderson sisters from my recent video and some more bamboo skewers to create a head. Then I grabbed a flour sack towel from Dollar Tree, trimmed it in half, and laid it over the top of my ghost. Now I ended up doing both layers on top of the one so it wasn't as see-through, but I liked the way it laid when I cut it in half instead of just folding it. Last step was to take some scrap black felt and glue on some eyes that I cut out to the front. Now you could add some lights or a flameless tea candle to the inside to make it glow, but I love this look. It is so cute and it's more the size for what I need in my home versus the large one that Sarah Jane made, but you gotta check out her video because it is super duper cute. I just put some spooky cloth over a riser and it made it look like my ghost was floating in the air. Love it. At a recent fall market, I saw these Primitive by Kathy little bowl fillers. They are wood, but they were way too expensive. They were four bucks a piece. So I decided to make my own. I grabbed three different colors of yarn in the candy corn motif, and I love this fuzzy yarn that Dollar Tree has. I started with just some scrap cardboard and cut out a template that looked like a candy corn. And then I started cutting out all these different pieces. You're gonna want as many pieces of cardboard that you want for your filler. Then I started with the orange yarn, and then we're gonna wrap it around to create the center band of the infamous candy corn. Set that with some more glue, and then I did the yellow. Now with the curved edges, you just need to use a little bit more hot glue and work a little bit slower to make sure you can cover all of the edges. But once I did, these were so cute, so, so much cheaper than buying those at the market. And I really like the texture of these. It's different than what I've got in my Halloween decor. So these are perfect. And you guys know how much I love using cardboard and projects. Now, because I had a lot of yarn left over, I wanted to make some of these. They are super quick and easy to put together, and I was inspired to do these by Mother Time over on Instagram. I grabbed some of these Dollar Tree foam little cones, and I did the same process as the other candy corns. I just used some hot glue and started wrapping, but this time I started at the bottom with the yellow, then the orange, and then this kind of silvery white. It gives it a primitive look, but if you want the stark white, you can go ahead and do that as well. The great thing about DIYs is you can make it whatever you want it to be. Now this next one, you can either call it a super easy DIY or a hack. Now this is for those signs that you're seeing at Dollar Tree that are hanging that you wanna make over for a tiered tray or to just sit on a shelf. You're gonna remove the hanging hardware, pop apart a clothespin, and use one of the two pieces that you get to glue to the back as a kickstand. Use a little bit more hot glue to make sure it stays and this is gonna sit up for you. These pies are so cute. I love the watercolor motif and it makes it really easy to add to a setup like this. I also absolutely loved the pumpkin and the skeleton on these two hanging signs. I also thought the words would be cute as well. So these also got the clothespin treatment and I used two different pieces of clothespin on the back of those long signs to make sure they would sit up. 
Throw them in with some spooky cheesecloth you can also get at Dollar Tree and you're good to go. Now what if yours won't sit up like this? You can just go ahead and take a sanding block, sand it down so you have a flat surface and it will sit for you. I also wanted some ghosts but they didn't have any signs that I liked so I grabbed some of these that were supposed to sit up on their own and I didn't really like the tail. So I chopped it off with my Amazon tin snips, painted it white, and then sanded it down to give it a rustic look. This fits really well in with the motif and I just was able to have it sit up with another clothespin on the back. Now you might have seen this terracotta slash primitive looking pumpkin earlier when I showed you the bouquet. And this is a dupe of the Pottery Barn terracotta pumpkins. Now if you haven't seen these dupes before, everybody's doing it. It's all over TikTok and Instagram. And I wanted to try my hand at it, but Dollar Tree style. Now it all started with one of these white Dollar Tree pumpkins. I suggest white if you can find it, just so you don't have to worry about covering up that bright orange. And I'm starting with some air dry clay to create a fun, whimsical stem. I rolled it in my hands and then I placed it just right over the stem that was on the foam, made sure it was really hooked down and then gave it the shape that I wanted. Then I decided I needed to pop off the bottom so I used an X-Acto knife to do that so I could insert a little light later on and then I used a marker to draw a little jack-o-lantern face that I wanted and used the X-Acto knife again to cut those out. Now the eyes and nose were easy to just cut and pop out but with the mouth I had to work section by section and it made it a lot easier. And here's how that turned out. So then we're going to create a terracotta color with paints that I already had because I couldn't find a terracotta that I liked in the store. We're mixing some nutmeg brown, some pumpkin orange, as well as some white acrylic paint. And we're also going to throw in some baking soda to thicken it up. There are a ton of different tutorials on how to get this look and what colors to use and all the things. I just went with what I was feeling, but you know, you can do the same thing. I gave it a couple coats and you want to make sure they're thick so that that baking soda can kind of set up and make it look more like pottery. And then when I was done with the second coat, right before it was fully dry, I sprinkled on some flour. I saw this on TikTok and I thought it gave it a really awesome finish. You're going to take a dry brush and essentially just brush the flour off and it's going to give you that whitewash look that you expect with terracotta. Then to get it to glow, I just set it over a Dollar Tree LED candle. And then I loved it so much, I made a ton of different ones for my mantle. I saw someone do this on TikTok and I thought this would look awesome on our mantle in our new house. And so I've been collecting these over the seasons from places like Michael's, Joann's, JCPenney, Target Dollar Spot, all over the place. I set them up with this fun little drape from Joann's and my mantle is ready for Hocus Pocus 2 this weekend. I had a lot of these pumpkins left over from last year, so I decided to make some more sweater pumpkins. I started by cutting a hole in the top after removing the stem and discarding that. Then I found a couple fun sweaters at my local thrift store on half price day. So I got these for a couple bucks and decided they would make great outsides to pumpkins. Don't forget to look at the scarves too. I cut apart my sweater so then that way I had a front and a back panel so I could do two different pumpkins. And I used my pumpkin to kind of measure to make sure my panel was going to be big enough as I went. Now I started to cover it and realized that that orange was going to show right through so I painted all three of them with just a quick coat of white chalk paint just to neutralize it. Then we're going to go through with our panel and just tuck it in as we go. So fold and tuck, fold and tuck all the way around the outside. And then to finish it off and make it really look like a pumpkin I just took a couple pieces of mulch. You can use twigs, you can use a ton of different things, you can get creative here and pushed it right into that center hole. And you've got a fun, cute little pumpkin. Add some really nice texture to a setup. And these are just Dollar Tree pumpkins that I put with a pumpkin patch sign. Easy peasy, super cute. Now I love getting t-shirts from Dollar Tree and I gotta give you full transparency that with this project, it's not fully a Dollar Tree DIY because I'm breaking out some of my bigger tools as you can see my heat press here, but these turned out so fun that I had to share them. So I started by purchasing these two graphics from Etsy. I did a fall coffee motif as well as this Hocus Pocus one and I can't wait to show it to you guys. So I took my orange shirt and I put a piece of cardstock inside and then cut out my little design. Now I've got a full video on how to sublimate so that's what we're doing here. So you can check out that video if you want to learn more, how to convert the printer, how to print everything out, how to size it, all that fun stuff. I'm putting it onto my shirt and I'm pressing it so that 
I am just basically sublimating onto the shirt. I really do like this HTV wrap press. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about it and I really do like it even after using it for sublimation. I have been able to kind of use it across the spectrum of what I would use it for and I really like it. Now, once that cup one was done, I did my Hocus Pocus one and I love these. Now you could leave them as is, but I really wanted to try the bleach technique that has been all over the internet. So I put a mixture of 50-50 bleach and water and I put my t-shirts over some cardboard boxes so that it wouldn't bleed through to the back. I started by drenching the design because you can put bleach over a sublimated design and because it's in the fibers of the shirt, you don't have to worry about it fading. Now these shirts are 50-50 cotton polyester that I got from Dollar Tree, like I mentioned. They are Gildan brand and it is going to start to bleach here. Once the design started bleaching, I just took some more of the solution and kind of spritzed it all around the outside as well as on the back. You're going to start to see it change and really this happened within a 10 to 15 minute period. I kind of really started gingerly because I wasn't sure what I was doing. Then I took it inside, gave them all a really good rinse with some super cold water. Then I put them both in my washing machine on their own for a full cycle with regular detergent, washed it on cold and did an extra rinse. Once I dried them, they were done and I love these. They are super fun and I really like that I can do sublimation on here. Now I think it was the 50-50 water to bleach instead of 100% bleach that didn't make it white, but I actually really like the highlighter yellow color with everything here. So I think it was a happy accident for sure. I also was able to make this sweatshirt and I love that it's pink because it's a mean girl nod. I'm wearing this for the Hocus Pocus premiere. That's gonna do it for today's video. Be sure to let me know down in the comments your favorite project. I love learning what you guys love and that helps inform future videos. And also let me know if you are thinking about Christmas. I know I am, I gotta get ahead of it. So I have the content out when you guys are ready for it. So keep an eye out for some Christmas content coming your way really soon. And I'll catch you in the next one, bye.